Hi, my name is Reese, and one of the things that I'm interested in is solar and battery technology. And today I have a power station that has a unique feature that I have never seen before. Anchor sent me their new Solix F3800, and what caught my attention were these ports over here. They say that this power station can natively output 240 volts at 6,000 watts. So before going over other features of this unit, the main thing that I want to test is can it output 240 volts up to 6,000 watts of AC power? So in order to test this, I have a Class A RV with two rooftop air conditioners. They're about 13,500 BTU each. Plus I have a window unit that's about 10,000 BTUs. And if I still need more power, then I've got some other things like a space heater and a microwave. So to begin the test, we're starting at 100%. The RV is plugged in on the side over there. And over here I have my 12 watts of rooftop solar on the RV plugged in to the side so it can input while we're doing an output test. All right, so I just heard the compressor kick on, so it's running the first air conditioner, and on the app you can see we are outputting about 955 watts. Now let's get the other air conditioner going. So the second compressor just started, both air conditioners are running, there was no problem, I didn't hear any buzzing or struggle to get those compressors started, and you can see here the battery is now outputting a little over 2,000 watts. So you can see we're at about 24, 2,500 watts of output, and I do want to say before I add some more loads that I've never had this happen before, where from one battery battery, I was able to start and continuously run both rooftop air conditioners on this RV. Now, neither of these air conditioners have a soft start on them, so they're drawing their full current when that compressor kicks in, and this is able to handle it. So now I have the third air conditioner. There it goes. So when the compressor finally turned on, I don't know if you could hear it, it struggled a little bit and it sent the inverter into overload because it was drawing too much power with all three of those air conditioners running at the same time. So I'm not able to start all three air conditioners at the same time and that's in part because even though this can do 6,000 watts of continuous output, you really have to break it down between each of the legs here. So each of these is 120 volts each at a 25 amps maximum. So what you're talking about is 3000 watts per leg here because this is the ground and this is the neutral. And depending on how this is wired in here, these 120 volt outlets, that it's probably going over that 3000 watt power output on the one leg. So I tried a few more things and I was able to get close to that 6000 watts of continuous output on this outlet by running both rooftop ACs and adding a bunch more loads including a microwave and a space heater. But like I said before, being able to start and continuously run both rooftop ACs on this RV is impressive. So I still didn't see over 6000 watts of power on the screen, so I invited my friend over who has something that takes 240 volts directly. The Solix F3800 can also charge an electric car. I have my friend who stopped by. I wish I had my own electric car, but he's gracious to let me borrow it for this test. And it does have a 50 amp plug to charge the batteries. Take a look at that output, 6,700 watts. Oh, it just shut off. So the reason it shut off is because my friend's charger is drawing about 27 and a half amps, which is over that 6,000 watt continuous limit. If we had an adjustable charger, we could lower it to 25 amps or less and it would charge the car just fine. It is impressive though that the F3800 can run that long at 6,700 watts, and if needed, it can output up to 9,000 watts for 10 seconds. Most of us aren't that familiar with how much power things use, so I wanted to give you a little bit of perspective. You know I've worked on a lot of TVs on this channel. 6,000 watts is a lot of power. A typical LED TV might use around 100 watts of power, so this one battery and this outlet could power about 60 TVs at the same time. You might recognize these outlets if you have an RV, an EV charger, or if you have a clothes dryer at your house. These are common 240 volt outlets and you could use either one to easily connect to a generator inlet box to power your house. No need to fire up a gas generator, plus you can keep this inside or if you have an RV, you can keep it in your storage area. Next, let's talk about some use case scenarios. You can charge it and discharge it at the same time before you saw me charging it with solar and outputting at 240 volts. Here I have it plugged into the wall AC and it's outputting AC down here. One of the features that it has is that it has a UPS function. So what that means is it's connected to grid power right here and it's coming out here powering this laptop. This laptop doesn't have a battery in it so it's running completely off that AC outlet. These out AC outlets on the side here, the left three are the UPS ones. So watch what happens when I unplug the grid power. Take a look at the screen. You can see it's on the, the white screen there. See if it flickers when I pull it off. You don't see anything on the screen, so it, it switches over to battery power that fast. Another use case you might be in is wanting to charge with the wall AC and use the 240 volt output at the same time. 
The F3800 doesn't support this feature, so you would need to either be charging it from the wall AC or using the 240 volt output. But you can charge by solar and use the 240 volt output at the same time. In this example, I'm getting about 1000 watts of solar input and outputting 3000 watts to the RV. You can also use the wall AC and the 120 volt outlets at the same time. On my unit though, which is a prototype, I found that when I'm charging by grid power and using just the 120 volt AC inverter, there was a limit of about 1200 watts of output that I could expect out of the outlet. So for charging and discharging at the same time, it seems you aren't able to get true pass through AC, for example, 1800 watts in and then 1800 watts out. In this scenario, it seems to be limited between 12 and 1300 watts of output. And while you can't input 240 volts directly to the F3800, Anchor has a home panel that's coming out that's going to allow you to connect directly to the grid and do things like charge a 240 and connect a rooftop solar array. Let's talk about specs, then I'll cover charging and discharging. In terms of specs, the F3800 has 3.8 kilowatt hours of storage capacity with lithium iron phosphate batteries. And with an expansion port for extra batteries, you can get up to 26.9 kilowatt hours. You can also combine two units to get close to 54 kilowatt hours. And this port up here is for connecting to Anchor's smart home panel. This unit weighs about 132 pounds, so it's technically portable. If you aren't picking it up, it has a nice telescoping handle and wheels that make it pretty convenient to transport. And even if you need to pull it through a yard, those wheels work pretty well. It's also got locking casters in the front. It's made with the option to be upright or lay on its backside. It's got rubber mounts and even a surprise handle underneath to help you move it in this orientation. And when it's laying this way, you can still access all of the input and output ports. In addition to the AC outlets, it has some DC ports, a 12 volt car port, three USB-C ports that can do up to 100 watts, and then two USB-A. Anchor also has an app that you can use to control and monitor the F3800 by Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Here you can see I have the AC inverter on. I could turn it off with this little toggle switch. It's outputting 37 watts. I'm using the one USB-C port. It's powering my laptop at 37 watts of output, and I can tr control some other things. And one thing that I always wanna see besides some of these other options is the ability to click on a firmware upgrade, and you can see I'm up to date. In terms of charging, there are two main ways. You can use the wall AC or solar. Unfortunately though, you can't use both at the same time because the unit will prioritize the AC. When I charged the unit from empty to 100% at the maximum rate of 1800 watts, it took about two hours and 45 minutes. But you guys know I always prefer to charge by solar when possible. The F3800 has two input ports for solar rated for 1200 watts each for an overall solar input rating of 2400 watts. There is a maximum voltage input of 60 volts on each port. So make sure to check that the solar panels you plan to use don't go over that limit. For example, this is one of my 385 watt panels and it has about a 40 volt rating. So I'd have to put two of them in parallel for one port to stay under 60 volts. And then I could add two more panels in parallel on the other port. I've got 1200 watts of solar with six panels on my RV roof that I have configured with two in series with three of the sets in parallel, which is about at the maximum one of these ports can handle. And if I stayed under 60 volts at 25 amps, I could add another set of solar panels for an additional 1200 watts. For battery capacity on the AC inverter, I ran a test starting at 100% and connected a constant 1000 watt load. As the battery got down to 10%, I was encouraged to see some alerts on my phone warning me of the low battery percentage. Now this unit doesn't let the battery get down to 0% in order to help prolong the life of the battery so it stops at 1%. So the test took about 3 hours and the battery outputted 3.13 kilowatt hours and I realized that number would have been a little bit higher had I turned off the LED lights in the front. It's pretty cool that Anchor has made a power station that's easy to use, especially if you need a 50 amp service for your RV, you can plug directly into your house generator port, or even charge an electric vehicle. And you have these two options for 240 volt output. This one is the NEMA 1450, and this one is the locking NEMA 1430 port. If interested, you can get a great deal on the F3800. Anchor is rolling this out on Kickstarter and it's currently available at 35% off with an estimated delivery in January. Now this can be a portable battery or one that is more permanently situated in your house. If you wanna learn more about my thoughts on solar and integrated batteries for your house, check out this video over here and let me know your thoughts and questions in the comment section below.